Hello everyone. Today we will be taking a look at how to go about creating something like this using cavalry and a bit of After Effects. This is a very popular style where the pixels in an input image or video are replaced with shapes. Those shapes are then transformed, that is scaled or moved, using brightness information of each pixel to create an effect like this. One addition I have made to this technique is to have videos in place of shapes that replace these pixels and use the brightness information from the input image or video to draw the frames in the video. It will hopefully make more sense in a while when we get to it. I have been trying to explore cavalry for a while now and with this series of videos I am hoping to record some of my explorations and explain how they are done. Please make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out the next ones in the series. Before we get started, there will be a couple of things that we will need. I am using After Effects to create these things, but these can be done in any other motion software as well. For our example, I have the circular shape with an animated gradient. The frames from this video will be distributed according to the brightness of each pixel in the composition. So please make sure that there is enough contrast between the first and the last frame of this video. I suggest keeping it low in size because this is a video that will be repeated across your composition. Just in case you want to see how I have done this in After Effects, I have this square shape with a gradient animating from one end to the other. I have used optics compensation with a high field of view to make it seem circular. I have also added a fast box blur on top to smooth out the gradient. After you are done, render a PNG sequence and make sure that you have a folder like this with the PNG sequence in place. The second thing that we will need is a grayscale input video which will be the same size as the expected output. In this case, this is a footage I got from Pexels, which I have made grayscale by adding a black and white effect on an adjustment layer. I have cropped it to be 800 by 800 so that it matches my composition size in Cavalry. You can obviously use different input videos according to your requirement to achieve different results. After you are done, you should have a video like this ready to be imported into Cavalry. With that out of our way, let's get started with Cavalry. After you open Cavalry, you will see something like this on the screen by default, a 1920 by 1080 artboard. Let's change the composition settings by clicking here. I am working on a 800 by 800 composition with a frame rate of 30 frames per second. So let's change that accordingly. Now that we have our composition set, let's import our assets by double clicking here. Let's import the grayscale input video first and then the brightness render PNG sequence by selecting all the PNGs in the folder and clicking on open. Once you do that, you'll see Cavalry has created a group with all PNGs inside it. Let's rename it brightness render. Next, let's create an ellipse using the ellipse tool on the toolbar here. If you hold Alt or Option on a Mac while clicking, the ellipse will be created at the center of the composition. When we do this, an ellipse is added to the composition and timeline. Its properties are being displayed on the left bottom panel, which is called the Attributes Editor. In Cavalry, double clicking on a layer opens its attributes or properties in the Attributes Editor. Unlike After Effects, where you have to twirl the layer down to see its properties, you have all the properties listed here where they can be manipulated or animated. In the Attributes panel, let's go to the Fill section here. By default, you'll see that there is a fill color of gray already applied here. We want to replace the gray color here by an image. We can do that using a shader object. Let's right click here, go to Add Shader. You'll see there are different kinds of shaders available to be used to fill a shape. We are interested in the image shader, so let's just click on that. Doing that added an image shader in the shaders section on the Fill tab as well as on the timeline. As with everything else, we can double click on the image shader layer to open its attributes or properties in the attributes editor on the left. One of the great things about Cavalry is that you can connect almost anything to anything else to drive properties and make connections. On each layer, you will see these arrows which indicate what properties of this layer are being driven and what property of any other layer this layer is driving. In this example, composition's frame rate is driving or controlling the frame per second of this image shader. And the ellipse shape's fill 
is being driven or controlled by this shader. We have applied an image shader on the fill property of this ellipse, but we can't see any image being displayed in there. That is because there is no file in the image shader yet which it can display. To see if it is working, let's drag an image from this PNG sequence to the file section of the image shader. And as we do that, we'll see the image is being displayed on the ellipse. Great, so it works. Let's undo this because we want an image sequence to be displayed there instead of a single image. Now, we have this folder with all the images which we want to display in a sequence. To do so, let's make use of an asset array. We can create an asset array by right-clicking on this folder and choosing Create Array from Assets in Group. After we do that, we'll see it creates another layer in the timeline which is this asset array itself. Let's double-click to see its properties. It has options for indexing or numbering the assets which in this case are PNGs from our PNG sequence. What that means is it will use this number to display the corresponding asset from the list below. Right now, it is set to auto-index, but we will change it later. Below, we'll see all 60 assets which have been added in these individual columns, one for each PNG in our PNG sequence. The names of these are not being displayed correctly here, but that might be a minor bug in Cavalry. Now, as we mentioned before, we want to display this image sequence in the ellipse we have on the center of our comp. To do so, let's first open the image shader in the attributes editor. Now, if we try to drag this asset array in the file section of the image shader, it won't work. I am assuming it is because of the file type that the image shader expects does not match that of the asset array. Let's connect the output of the array, which contains individual images, to the image shader. How we do it in Cavalry is by grabbing this dot, which will give you a pick whip and then use the pick whip to connect it to the desired property. In this case, the only supported property on this image shader is file, so we can let go of the pick whip on top of it to make a connection. As soon as we do that, our ellipse starts displaying the images from the asset array in sequence. We want this ellipse to be repeated across our composition. To do so, let's select the ellipse layer in the timeline and go to this icon on top. Hovering on it, we will see this text which says Create a Duplicator. Let's click on it and we'll get a 3x3 grid of duplicates of the ellipse by default. As always, the attributes editor on the left will have the properties of this duplicator. So let's change the size inside the distribution to 800 in X and Y each. Count to 20 and 20 each and the shape scale to 0 0.21 by 0 0.21. By the way, you can link the X and Y numbers by clicking on this link icon. We can change these later, so these values don't really matter right now. Now, we have a grid of these ellipses, all of which have the same animation being displayed. If we take a look at the final video that we have, the animations that play inside these individual ellipses are different from one another. They are distributed according to the input video, which is this grayscale footage. What it is doing essentially is taking the pixels from this video, calculating the brightness information in the pixel, and then use that to display the frames of the circle animation. To access the brightness information stored in the grayscale input footage, we need an image sampler. Let's add that by clicking on this plus icon here and searching image sampler. Let's double click on it to add it to our timeline. On the attributes panel on the left, we'll find the image asset field. Let's drag and drop our grayscale input video from the assets panel here. If I turn off everything else and increase its opacity, you'll see that it does nothing by itself except displaying the video. But the output of this image sampler has all the pixel information of every single pixel on the video that it is displaying. We can use this information to drive other attributes, which is why this is very important. The order in which it is displaying the video frames is controlled by the time factor here. Right now it is being controlled by the composition's time. So as we scrub through the timeline, the animation changes accordingly. We'll also change these things later. 
Now, this is an important step. Let's break it down before we proceed. What we want to do is take these frames inside the asset array and distribute them on the grid of ellipses according to the brightness information that we get from this image sampler. Output from the image sampler is in the range of 0 to 1. We need to convert it to go from 0 to 60 because that is the number of frames that we have in our brightness render animation, the PNG sequence that we have stored in this asset array. That way, when the brightness output for a pixel is 0 from the image sampler, we'll have the frame at 0 being played in its place. Similarly, for when the brightness output of a pixel is 1, which is the most bright pixel, we'll have the frame at 60 being displayed in its place. Hopefully that makes sense. To convert one range of values to another, we can make use of a number range object. Let's click this plus icon again and search for number range. Double click on it and add it here. Let's click the dot here, drag the pick whip, and then go over the number range layer to see available connections. We have to connect it to the value of the number range. So let's select that. In the number range attributes, let's specify the source range, which is in our case, the value from the image sampler. That value goes from 0 to 1. So let's leave the source minimum to 0 and change the source maximum to 1. We want this range to go from 0 to 60. So let's change the minimum and maximum, which is the output of this number range, to 0 and 60 respectively. Let's turn our layers back on and hide the image sampler. We see the same animation playing as before. What we need to do now is to go to this brightness render array and change how it is displaying the assets according to the new range that we have from the number range we just created. To do so, let's first turn off auto index and then grab the output of number range and connect that to the index column here to use that to drive the index. We still do not see anything change in our composition. And that is because the image shader that we are using to display the image is still displaying the image according to the composition's time. Let's change that by double clicking the image shader to lower its properties and then connecting the index of the brightness render array to time so that it displays the frames accordingly. As soon as we do that, we will be able to see the effect. Let's now add a background shape by creating this plus icon again and searching for a background shape. Let's add it by double clicking, move it to the bottom of the timeline and make it black from its fill tab so that we can see the effect better. The best part about Cavalry's procedural flow is that we can then go to the duplicator and change its properties, like increasing the count of ellipses, adjusting size, and it will work without the need to change anything else. Let's add some text on top and we're done. So that was it. You can use this technique to create a wide variety of animations by changing the input grayscale video and the brightness render video. All you have to do is import them into your Cavalry project and just replace the existing connections. In case you have trouble doing that, please post your questions in the comment section and I'll try to answer them. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss the other tutorials in this series. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.